Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a really short video for you, and this I hope will answer a question for you guys that I had uh, not too long ago. So, my question was, is it worth it to suppress 17 HMR? You guys that follow the channel have seen this gun before. This is a Savage uh, 93R17 in 17 HMR, and I've had this gun for 10 or 11 years. Like it a lot. I've had some problems with it in the past. What I found out was that um, I had a firing pin that needed replaced, and uh, I was also having some ammunition problems. The gun got sent back to Savage. It now has a new firing pin, and I have found some ammunition that I really like. The ammunition for today's test will be uh, CCI A17 ammo. This is stuff that I really like and have had some good consistent accuracy with. When I got this rifle, uh, suppressors were pretty much unheard of. In fact, uh, I was under the impression for a long time that they were illegal, which is, of course, not the case. This rifle was not threaded when I bought it, but for $100, my gunsmith threaded the end of it. When I had him do this, I thought, uh, I don't really know if it's worth it to have 17 HMR suppressed because it's a really small bullet moving pretty darn fast, uh, around 2,600 feet per second, if I'm remembering correctly. As you guys know, uh, 223 is another cartridge that moves pretty fast and doesn't suppress all that well. But I figured I'd give it a try anyway, since I already have this Thunder Beast 22 takedown suppressor that I'm using on a couple of my 22s. So I had my gunsmith thread the muzzle for half by 28. One thing that I'll tell you guys, uh, before you have someone thread your barrel, especially for a rimfire, check the specifications for your specific suppressor. One thing that I did not realize before I had him do this is that the thread, the, the length of the threaded area for rim fires is shorter than the length of the threaded area for most center fire rifles. I didn't know that. So he initially threaded this, and I don't remember the length of the area he had threaded, uh, but it, it was significantly longer than I needed for this suppressor. And when I threaded the suppressor on here, the uh, muzzle was running into the baffles and not and the suppressor was not able to square up against the shoulder a and it was sitting kind of crooked on there i was still able to see straight through the muzzle and out the gun so there wouldn't have been a baffle strike uh because we because this is a 17 caliber bullet in a uh, 5.7 capable suppressor but it was visibly crooked on the end of the gun, and I did not want to have, uh, I didn't want to have things seated on the first baffle there. So, because the length of the threaded area was too long, uh, I took it back to my gunsmith, and he graciously cut it down to the correct uh, 0 0.400 inches, and recrowned the barrel at no charge to me, which was really nice of him. So, I want to do my best today to answer the question for you guys, uh, is it worth it to suppress 17 HMR? I don't have any fancy sound testing equipment out here. All I've got is my normal microphone, and I've got it on the top of my uh, jacket lapel today, as close to my ear as possible to give you guys an idea of what it sounds like. Of course, it's not going to be anything like uh, it would be if you were here, but hopefully it'll at least give you a little bit of an idea. I also have a couple of targets downrange. I'm not going to throw up a target camera today, but we'll see what the accuracy is like as well. Uh, I will mention before I start, this is a 20-inch uh, barrel, so a shorter barrel might be a little louder, a longer barrel might be a little quieter, but first we're going to shoot it. Without the suppressor on, I will note that the scope is zeroed for the suppressor, so I'm not sure what the point of impact shift is, but we'll look at the groups unsuppressed, and then I will put the suppressor on, and we'll check it then. So, let's get shooting. Target is down there at 50 yards. We'll just do three shot groups today, I think.
All right, my rimfire bench rest shooting technique is not the best, but uh, let's go down range and take a look at that. All right, that is the worst group I've shot with 17 HMR in a long time. That's over an inch at 50 yards, uh, which is pretty unacceptable. We'll throw the suppressor on and shoot down here and see if I can hold it a little tighter. And now, as you can see, hopefully there if I can get the light right, uh, the suppressor sits back against that shoulder really nicely and squarely. All right, we'll shoot this group at 50 yards with the suppressor on and see how it looks and sounds, more importantly. All right, so that group is definitely better. Uh, it looks a little bigger than it is just because these 17 caliber holes are quite tiny, but that is about a half inch center to center on there. And I will adjust the scope just a little bit to this way to get it centered up before I quit for today, but uh, that's looking pretty good. The group down there shot with the suppressor is a little bit better, but whether that has to do with my shooting or the suppressor being on, I don't know. Uh, we would have to shoot a bunch of groups to tell that for sure, but that's really neither here nor there. The specific topic of this video is how it sounds. Let me play those shots both unsuppressed and then suppressed back for you, and you can be the judge. So you might have noticed, while I was shooting without the suppressor, I was wearing earplugs, and once I put the suppressor on, I didn't bother putting them in. Guys, for me, the answer is yes. Absolutely, it's worth it to shoot with a suppressor on. At the very least, it directs all the sound down range. But I think it does a little bit more than that, because I did, uh, before I got the threads cut back to the proper length, I threw on an old crappy uh, blast diverter on here and tested it out. It uh, was significantly louder than the suppressor on here. This has been my main small game hunting rifle and my around the house varmint rifle for quite a long time. And before, my only gripe about it was that it was loud, a whole lot louder than a 22. And especially if I was shooting right up next to the house, rang my ears a little bit and I don't like that because I want to protect my hearing. With a suppressor on the end of here, I can shoot this thing all day long, no problems at all. It's not even a little bit uncomfortable. I would say that the sound, uh, that it is maybe only slightly louder than suppressed supersonic 22 and May, it, not by all that much. I wish I had a method to measure it, um, but I don't. Guys, if you're on the fence about getting your rimfire rifle uh, threaded, or if you're on the fence about buying a suppressor, just do it. Uh, a suppressor, and specifically in this case a rimfire suppressor, is probably the best shooting related investment that you can make. Once you start shooting suppressed, you won't go back. Hopefully in the near future, we won't have to pay the stupid $200 tax stamp to get suppressors. Um, but for now, even while we do, I still think uh, that it is absolutely worth it. So to answer the question of the video, yes, it's absolutely worth suppressing 17 HMR. And I will be keeping this scope zeroed for the suppressor on the end. And when I take this thing out, squirrel, rabbit hunting, raccoon, whatever, I'm keeping the suppressor on the end of there. Makes it much more pleasant, doesn't uh, make, doesn't scare things off uh, nearly as badly as shooting this unsuppressed, and I am really liking having it, I am really liking having it on the end of my 17 HMR. Guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and if you want to uh, support the content that I am making. I would really appreciate it if you search for the Outdoor Generalist channel on Patreon and uh, subscribe over there. I'd really appreciate it. The YouTube funds just barely pay for the video editing software subscription that I have each month and doesn't even touch the uh, bullets, reloading components, 
or ammunition that I shoot for the videos. So again, thanks for watching and y'all have a good one.